Hey everyone, it is Diaper Perv, and we've got a special guest, Zacharou, and we've got Livewire as usual because he's local, and Gree J, and way over there it is Sailor in Dips waving. Hello. So we're gonna, I guess the last uh, video, uh, which was um, Zach's video, the binging and purging kind of segues into this topic, which is uh, self-acceptance. Because if we had self-acceptance, if we were okay with our kinks and our fetishes and, th and the things we enjoy, we wouldn't feel the need to purge. So how do we get to that level? There are some of us totally on that level. There are some of us way above that level and don't give a crap about what happens in public. Um, but there's some people that have a good balance of their kink life and their personal life and they don't feel ashamed of who they are. So how do we get there? I, I can share a little bit of my journey. Um, so for the longest time I was trying to get there by um, creating this idea in my head that maybe this is who you are and this is what makes you happy but it's so unorthodox and so there was always this back and forth struggle of like why aren't you a manly man why aren't you like shooting guns and going out there and working on your truck or you know uh, as my uncle would always say you know uh, I mean I was I was very very good at this part of it but you know the I, I feel like he was encouraging the opposite of and forgive my foul language, but keeping your dick in your pants, you know, <laughs> it's a terrible analogy, but, um, I, I got to the point to where I realized that I was hurting myself more trying to fulfill, like, this image of, like, this macho guy, and, and it got to a point to where I, I realized that, you know, I'm not your typical everyday man's man, and that's okay, and that, that there were other hurdles along the way that would take, an anthology of, of trilogies the size of Lord of the Rings to get to get to where we are now in greater detail but um, when I finally got there it was like this transcendent piece that came over me where it's like okay cool you wear diapers okay cool you're a little okay cool you prefer that um, to take a, a backseat role in a relationship and that you kind of prefer to have some decisions made for you and that's cool that doesn't affect who you are you're still a very likable person you're still a very um, relatable person and, and people you know like you for you and while they may not see the entire picture um, what matters most is is that you love yourself and then you're able to see like oh wow people like me for this reason because I'm actually a pretty okay person and when you couple these things with, uh, with like your kinks or um, with things that make you happy that may seem a bit out of the ordinary, and you couple the things with your regular regular vanilla muggle life, and you kind of blend these things together, and you make this really beautiful picture painting, if you will, of yourself, and you look at it, and you think, wow, it took me so long to get here. But now you're here, and even though you kind of regret the journey when you went there, you're here now, you know? Okay, so Zach, so how was it hurting you? Uh, it was hurting me because um, from a standpoint... So I, I grew up in a very religious household where you were expected to fulfill this this cookie-cutter stereotypical role of being ex-guy. You know, like I mentioned my uncle earlier, you know, he... he would push these ideals on me, and so would my dad, and and that would hurt me because like I feel like I wasn't living up to those things by being me, and then I realized I don't have to be those things, you know, I can be myself, and so once I finally uh, stopped believing in what they were saying and, and believed in my truth, if you will, then I was able to to get past that hurt and no longer be hurt and begin mm -hmm. healing myself with mm -hmm. being myself. Okay. Okay, cool. So do you think that um, in your journey, going out and meeting other people helped? Yeah, 100%. Um, living in a very uh, 
I mean, in a very conservative Bible Belt area, for the longest time, there was only like me or two other people. And, um, and then finally introducing and building a community for everyone. And it, even, and it was funny is, is that a small amount of people make a huge difference. Like my, my friend, Sean, I love Sean to death. Um, such a great dude. If it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't be where I am right now because these people who you meet, they cause such a huge impact in your life. And you, you may not realize it just then and now in the moment, but when you look back 10 years later, like with me and Sean's friendship, it made a huge difference. Mm -hmm. That's cool. That's great. It's important to like find others like you, and I think that is really affirming. Um, Grije, I know you, you've had quite the journey with self-acceptance and being happy with who you are and coming out as you. Yeah, it starts, it, you know, it, it first starts, um, like Zach said, um, it, it, it starts out with the, you know, for me it was always, well, I'm, I'm supposed to be an alpha male. I'm supposed to be alpha. How can I possibly be alpha? Possibly how can I possibly take care of a household, mm -hmm. take care of work, um, and, and still have this side to me? So there was a, a major struggle there. And then the acceptance came when I started meeting other people and I started realizing that there was a community. Uh, it wasn't until 2019, well, I guess it was 2020, it was COVID time, right after, right after COVID, or right as COVID started was when I reached out and started started meeting people on the internet, started started realizing that there was an actual real life community. Mm -hmm. Started talking to people, people were great. People would introduce me to other people, they would introduce me to um, activities and things online. And then I started getting a, a feel for, there's other people that do this and there's other people in, in, in couples, you know, mm -hmm. relationships, there's people that maybe not have relationships, but they have friendships online that, or friendships with people around the country. And um, all of that started leading to me believing that I'm not crazy or weird or there's nothing wrong with me, um, that there was other people. And once I found those people, I started realizing, okay, well, I'm, I want to go and venture out and meet people. Uh -huh. And that's when you show up and you maybe wear a diaper. Maybe you wear, you, you're wearing your, you know, your, your standard issue clothes and you go into a, a, a munch or you go to a, a house party and you're the guy who's, or the person who's just there. And people still accept you. Uh -huh. And then you graduate to maybe the next day or the next, you know, the next uh, event. Maybe you show up and you're wearing a onesie, but you're still wearing your jeans because you don't want to take your, you don't want to expose yourself. You know, you don't want to show that you, that you wear diapers. And then a couple, you know, then you start getting more comfortable. You wade into the, into the, uh, the community and wade into, uh, um, events, places, people, things, and um, look at me. And you start wearing a diaper around everybody else and you don't care. <laughs> um, but then you realize that it's a relief and then you realize that it's, it's, it's actually, it, it's, it's, um, it's therapy, if you will. It, um, it's something that we, always, that we all want to do, we all want to experience, and it's a part of us that just doesn't go away. So. Um, once I realized that I was the person that was holding me back, and I let that go, um, hmm. you know, I didn't jump off the ledge. I didn't jump off head first, but I wade into the water further and further every time. Right, baby steps. Baby steps. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and like today, you were about to like come out and show your face on YouTube, <laughs> and then I, I don't know, forbade it. <laughs> Well, I tell you what. Let's do a let's do a, a, a survey. Yeah. Who wants to see Grey J? No. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Grey J. Grey J. There'll be plenty of other opportunities. You guys can all come see my Instagram. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You should do um, the survey on your Instagram. Ooh, and, that's a good idea. And whatever all your socials that you're on. Yeah, yeah. but I only have like you know 100 followers, so. Oh, we need to change that. Everybody, go follow Grey J. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So I have a question for you. Yeah. Um, if you did not go into the online community, mm -hmm. which eventually led you to on um, to in-person events, would you still be as self-accepting? No. No, I would be stuck in the bench purge process. I would be stuck in. Uh, I would have never opened up to my partner. 
Wow. Yeah, because it was it was it was literally the uh, the COVID uh, pandemic, um, and everything shutting down, and me meeting people online. That was what m led me to podcasts. It led me to conversations with people, um, messaging, and it was that that convinced me that I wasn't alone. Right. On you know, I felt like for the longest time, I felt like I was the only person that did this. And I felt like if you saw somebody in a magazine or, yes, I'm old enough for magazines. If you saw somebody in a magazine or an online post or, you know, a clip, a video, whatever it may be, I thought that those were just models that were just, you know, fantasizing a kink. Oh. Um, when I started realizing that there are people that, there are people that are 100% that are lifestyle. There are people that, are, that do this on a Saturday afternoon just because they, they're, 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 you know, killing time. Um, it, it, it becomes a relationship builder. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would never have if, if, if I didn't, you know, if, if that didn't all work out and that didn't happen and I didn't meet, you know, no, I would have never come out. Wow. So, Grijay, so you did not like really look for the community or you didn't realize there was other people like you until COVID. Correct. Holy crap. So there is a good, so one good thing came from COVID. <laughs> Diapers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, not diapers. Diapers was always a thing. Always a thing. Um, but community. And, wow. and I would not have met a lot of the people that know me. Wait, so why didn't you, like, I guess, try to look for other people with this interest before? Uh, well, I mean, part of the reason is uh, when I first started, when I was, say, 18-ish, you know, mm -hmm. 18, 19, 20, 21, um, that was when when internet was first starting to come out. Yeah. So I would I, I saw you know a lot of the like like the DPFs and 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 diaper online and diaper pill well, DPF is diaper pill friends but um, yeah. those were the avenues that I saw mm -hmm. when I when I first came came when it, when I first started coming into you know coming into what this is mm -hmm. and like I said I thought I didn't I didn't go to the chat pages and things of that nature I I just went to the videos. Mm -hmm. And the pictures, and I thought that it was just a. And oh. I thought it was a fantasy. I thought it was a made-up thing. Oh, okay. And so I wasn't. I worked a lot from mm -hmm. the time I was 18 until yesterday. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I worked a lot, and a lot of my work was on the road. It was it was construction. It mm -hmm. was getting dirty and, and and working in the dirt. You know, and and, and you were 10, 12 hours. The last thing you want to do is go back to a motel room and go on a chat forum and start trying to figure out who you are. Yeah. So um, I would just work myself to where I was so tired that it, that, that stuff wasn't available to me. Wow. And it, like, like we said, COVID, we, I was stranded in the middle of Illinois in a one-bedroom, basically, well, yeah, I guess it was a bed, one bedroom, but it was the size of a studio apartment. And um, I had nothing else to do. Mm -hmm. COVID shut down the town I was in. It mm -hmm. shut down my work. Mm -hmm. And they told us we had to, we had to, you know, basically seclude ourselves for two weeks before the world started to open up. And in those two weeks, I found all of you guys. Well, right. Kinda. I found the, I, I found mm -hmm. the path to all of you guys. Aww. Yeah. That's pretty magical. I found you a month ago at Nipchella. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And yeah, this YouTube channel was born from COVID as well because I realized I have opinions and I need a longer platform than 10 minutes on Instagram. And I wanted a bigger platform that can reach everybody. So that's pretty cool. So what about you, uh, Sailor and Dips? So, I've known I've been into this since, obviously, like most of us. Since, Tuesday. Since yesterday, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> since I was a little kid. And uh, I learned about the community, I would say probably 15 years ago, but then stayed very distant from it for a long time. I didn't want to, I didn't know how to explain this side of me myself, and so I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to expose myself to, like, anybody else if I didn't even understand it yeah and honestly I was like this is really weird so if it's weird to me I don't want to go hang out with anybody else because then they're weird too and so I kind of went through that whole phase of denying it and mm -hmm. you know the, the binge and purge so to speak that kind of happened when I was you know young, 17 18 when I go mm -hmm. buy a pack and be like what am I doing this is stupid and then mm -hmm. throw them out it wasn't anything really crazy past that 
And then it wasn't until, um, but same thing kind of with the, the alpha male, you know, I was, you know, being in the military, I was, I was raised to always be dominant and, and take charge and stuff. And so this was a, a hard thing for me to understand and me to, to ever share. And, you know, I have a, a, a family, I have kids and, and a wife. And so once I told her about it, then um, it was very easy for me to accept it myself, knowing that she accepted me for it. Oh, okay. So then it became, well, cool, I want to embrace this, and this is a part of me, and instead of trying to hide it and shove it down, because, I mean, you're not going to get rid of it. I don't care what anybody no. says. This is always going to be a point. If you have it, it's it's yours to the end. And so I just learned that there's no point in, you know, running from it. It's not going to help. But just let's embrace it. And now I actually enjoy it, and I've, some of the, the, we were talking about it the other night at dinner. I mean, these are some of the best friends. I mean, your, your kink friends and your friends in the community, they know more than some of your most bestest, closest vanilla friends. You yeah. know, none of my vanilla friends know this side about me. So, yeah, it's, uh, that was my way of, now I just completely don't care and accept it. I mean, I don't go out in public and go <laughs> do anything crazy. And I still don't show my face for, for professional reasons, but. Nothing crazy at like 11.30 and I don't. You know, Vegas. <laughs> I would never do anything no, crazy. You I guys know me. Coming. I am the most tame person there is. I mean, like, I follow rules. Um, I don't talk back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Lightning is going to hit us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Wait, so, so why did you decide to tell your wife? Like, what was the catalyst or the buildup to that? Um, so, I didn't want to tell her prior to because I like, again I didn't know how to explain it and if uh -huh. it was weird to me and if I couldn't explain it uh -huh. how could I expect her to understand it if I still didn't and so it wasn't until I did some like digger deeping and just realized like this is who I am and at that time I was way more just DL uh, I stayed yeah. more away from the little side I actually kind of discovered the little side um, through my wife's encouragement to like explore the community and, and you know try that out um, so I just, I just always stayed in the background until I told my wife and she, you know, opened that door up for me to, to, and encouraged me to go explore. That's awesome. Yeah. And congrats. Yeah, I figured I'd give her the chance to bail before we got <laughs> married. So it was, yeah, it was like a year before our wedding and I was like, Hey, you know everything about me except, and, uh, if, if this is a deal breaker, I understand. And she was like, I mean, it's fucking weird, but... <laughs> It's not a deal breaker. <laughs> and now she's she kind of plays with it sometimes. I mean, it's not her thing, but she's fully supportive and amazing. So. That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. I, I strongly suggest uh, early on in the relationship, letting them know. Um, I think uh, I think I let my wife know uh, we were together for 13 years. Uh -huh. So the deal breaker thing was well gone. <laughs> yeah. It was, uh, what was it, four years for me, five years for me? Yeah. But I had an injury that made me, afterward, I bruised to bed every night because uh, I was taking muscle relaxers. I blew out my shoulder. And uh, so that it wasn't really hard at that point, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Because it was actually her idea for me to wear something at night in a, mm -hmm. you know, depends on my carriers or something like that just as, as protection. And then I was like, ooh, what about these cool ones that have a print on them? And that's how it kind of... Oh, I knew what I wanted, but I didn't know how I was going to break that up. She was like, wow, those are adorkable. So. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. Like, And I know when she goes to Capcom for the first time, yep. her mind is going to be blown. Yeah. Blown. The, the little group in our local community, um, through, we, you know, for our, our most recent child, through a um, baby shower. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, you have to go now. She's like, fine, but you just need to check my face. Like, because if I just walk in and there's a bunch of people in diapers and little clothes, she's like, I might not be able to, like, re you know, hold back the laughter. And uh, I, was, I was like, I was just ready to see how this works. And she said <laughs> she had a really, really good time and she's ready to go to, to, um, to Capcom, it's just hard when you have, you know, children yeah. of your own to find the time yeah. <clears throat> and make sure that you actually take the time to take care of yourself if you're taking care of a family as well. Yeah, that's true. Cause I think self-care is so important then 100%. because, you know, if you're at, if you are at your best, then you can give your kids the best yeah. of you. And my wife's awesome about that. She yeah. knows that, that I need this side of me and I need to embrace it. And even if it's not her thing, she's amazing about letting me uh, take time away from the family to do it. That's fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you. 
So, uh, Livewire, can you give the viewers some good tips on self-acceptance and how you did it? I don't think I'm really the candidate because I was confident from day one. It didn't bother me. I just, you know, I really? never really had any feelings of guilt or oh. anything like that. So That's great. I don't, you know, I... You got to came out of the womb loving diapers. I have always, <laughs> no problem. I've always told you that... I don't think people need excuses to like what they like. Sometimes on Fet Life and other things, people mm -hmm. seem to make excuses for what they like, and I was never like that. I'm just like, hey, I like these. It's great, you know, you know, whatever. But sometimes people make excuses to like what they like. They don't want to make an excuse. Just hmm. accept themselves and be confident. I'm not saying it's the easiest thing in the world. That's not what I'm saying. That so sometimes make these people make unreasonable excuses. It seems to me, which is just my opinion. Okay, so I have a personal question for you, mm -hmm. and tell me if you want this cut out. But you never told your fiance. Uh, no. Yeah. Why not? Because I had a collection of uh, toys and things like that, mm -hmm. and she's the one I threw everything away to change, mm -hmm. and I knew that if she couldn't accept like bondage toys and ball gags and things like that, there's no way I could tell her about that, you know? And, and so I just never brought it up and I knew this was never gonna last and we broke up and mm -hmm. all good. Mm. Okay, cool. Well, I think for my journey, my journey is a little different because I don't wear diapers, but there are other things that are different about me. And the way I, have tried to accept it is um, finding other people, finding community and things that would embarrass me. Uh, I'm not going to say what it is, <laughs> um, but I thought I was kind of alone in a lot of things until the internet. And then I realized, oh my goodness, there are conventions for things that I'm interested in. And there are sites, and there's also other people that are like me. So um, I just went to a convention. And, and for other aspects of my life, um, I realized I'm just not getting any younger. I've wasted so many years of my life not enjoying the things that I wanted to enjoy. Um, and that makes me sad. So I don't want anyone else to miss out on it. That's my advice is that this is it you only live once and if you've gone like even a few years without having the things that make you happy it sucks and know that you're not alone there are other people out there no matter how weird your interests are Facts. Facts. Okay, is this a good time to spin the, the wheel? We're going to spin the wheel. Yes. All right, here it goes. Big money, big money. We, we have to clap. People can't even see oh, this okay. freaking wheel. That's how they do the wheel of fortune. They have to clap. I'll hold it like this. Okay. Ready? Okay, yeah. My face, man. It's a wheel of random topics. <laughs> diaper perv wears diapers. Okay. Did it land on that? Oh my goodness! It landed on tow truck. Yes, yes. that was oh, mine. Yes, yes. That's Taylor <laughs> did. It's tow trucks. Out of all the things, it could have been. We were coming up with random topics, and I picked tow trucks. <laughs> okay. Like a forty-three second time. Okay. But we could change it to. No, 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 no I like tow trucks. trucks. Okay. Big okay. ones. Big ones. Small yeah, ones. Carcass. Green you know. ones. Blue ones. The ones that pull good drench on the drugs. Yep. That's the one. The ones in those trashy reality TV shows that are telling people Enlighten us about tow trucks, dude. <laughs> I don't really know. Yeah, why did you bring good tight tow trucks? I don't know, I just, it's just the first thing that came to mind. They're not our friend when our car gets towed, I'll tell you that. Well, one was my friend a couple of weeks ago, and my car is out on the interstate. One guy came and picked me up, took me to the shop, and... That's a good reason, but... With your bad distributor, and 700 hours right, later, time we're good. <laughs> Boston, Let's spin it again. I don't like this topic. Yeah, okay. No, what? Okay. We're trying to make it work. All right. I know, and I really appreciate you guys on that. This is why we're doing Zach, it. do you want to spin it? Don't spin it too hard, because then it'll spin for like two minutes. <laughs> big money. Big, 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 big money. Big money. Yay! Onesies. Onesies. Oh, okay. Those never, are for babies. I've never won them ever in my life. Most of us here can relate to that. Oh, only only Green Jay's wearing a onesie right now. This is from Changing Times. It has 
construction stuff on it. So bigger. I'm doubling up. <laughs> oh, you have a space onesie. It's the sloths in space and then regular space. Oh, that's so cute. Um, no kind. <laughs> sloth in space? Yes, yeah, sloth, 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 sloth in space. Instead of lost in space, it's sloth in space. Yeah. I like it. It's so good. Sometimes I see people out in the world wearing a onesie and I recognize it and mm -hmm. I don't know if they're ABDL or not. I think it's really common for like women to wear onesies now. Like it's a thing. Yeah. yeah. Like snap cross onesies. Yeah. Yeah. They're tight. yeah. 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 Especially if they're into a DDLG. Yeah. And I want to be like, I have one. So my girlfriend's used to wear it. I used to love it. So just talk about your favorite onesie. So I love, like, do you want the brand or like which one? Yeah, which one? <coughs> uh, my favorite one that fits the best is my Rear's Dino onesie, but I don't know, like, ODU makes really, really good onesies too. I don't know, I'm really not picky. I don't like them too tight, I don't like them too baggy. They gotta be perfect, but that's just because I'm perfect. I'm just kidding, that's a joke. <laughs> Baggy onesies are not, They're not helpful. Cool. No, no, it doesn't do anything. Yeah, yeah, pointless. I've seen some though and I'm just like, what is that? Yeah. You know, it doesn't look right. Yeah. It's like wearing like a baggy suit. Yeah. It just looks trashy. It does. Like there's yeah. a science to a onesie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because it's supposed to hold your diaper uh -huh. up tight, right? So it doesn't yeah. move around. Wait, y'all wear diapers? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? I have a favorite one. I, I, the, the ABU Space Penguins. There's penguins in space? Yeah. Okay. I have it. It's cool. It's my favorite. I didn't wear it today. Are there penguins on the ABU Space Diaper? No. no. Right. That's what I Just thought. Some, I'm wearing one. The Skull Rebel one with other no, skulls on it? Yeah. Just aliens. Yeah. 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 Those are alright. No, ABU has oh, no, the aliens one. Are kind it's of like gone. a bluish, like, <laughs> snake, maybe a navy blue. And black, and it's got the penguins. It would on be it. navy blue. Oh, that's <laughs> cute. All right. Well, thank you, and I hope uh, some of these tips actually help your in your journey to us uh, self acceptance and accepting this side of you. So, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, all their info is in the description, and we'll see you later.